19 questions people have asked me with regards to IELTS test. In this video, this is what I'm going to talk about. If you are interested or if you think this video will be of much value to you, then come with me. Welcome back. If you are new on my channel, I really appreciate you for being here for the first time. And if you are a returning subscriber, you know it's because of me that I'm always motivated to make this video. I know this video is going to be of much value to you, and uh, I won't wait for it to end before I tell you to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and become part of the family. Okay, so without waste much time, I'm going to start with the first question. So the first question I have ever received is. <laughs> is an English proficiency test and it stands for International English Language Testing System. It's an exam which is expected to be written by citizens from non-English speaking countries willing to probably study or work in the UK, Canada, USA, Australia and other countries as well. So let's say you want to study abroad in the UK, in the USA, most of the institutions will require you to sit for these exams. It's just a way to prove that you can communicate effectively in English. The next question on my list here is so I had consists of four basic tests. Four. You've got the speaking test, the reading test, the listening test, and then the writing test. These are the four aspects you'll be sitting for. They would want to test you if you are good at the English language in terms of writing, in terms of speaking, in terms of reading, and in terms of listening. So that is the basic aspect of it. The next question I have ever received is Say that everybody can write IELTS regardless of your age, regardless of your gender, regardless of your social class. It's much more of you knowing why you are writing these exams, and that is to say that IELTS is for everybody, provided you know the purpose for which you are writing. There is no restriction. So, one may ask, What about children? Yeah, a child can write IELTS, especially if you are below 18 years. But what happens here is that an adult will have to do the registration for you. Everybody for me can write IELTS. And when you go to the British Council's website, they have inscribed that on there. So there's nothing to restrict you from writing these exams. The next question is To say something is difficult, it's much more of individualistic. It depends on the person concerned. I remember that in school, most of my friends used to complain about the fact that mathematics is difficult. I had other friends who felt like math is easy. It's like we are in the same class, but we have different opinions to mathematics. So what I would say is that there is no specific answer to this. The difficulty of IELTS depends on so many factors. One is about your understanding about the test. And then two is about how prepared or how you can prepare so well to meet up to the task and then three is about the mindset to say something is difficult or not difficult depends on the mindset if you see perceive it to be difficult to be difficult for you and if you perceive it to be easy it will be easy for you so what i would say is that it's difficult for those who see it to be difficult and easy for those who see it to be easy so that's what i can say the next question i've got here is <laughs> is probably organized by three different institutions we've got the british council we've got the cambridge assessment um, institution and then we've got ielts rdp australia depending on whichever institution you want to register with all you have to do is to go to their website and then register but one thing you should get to know that british council is much more generalized so most people do register at the british council but if you're interested in the idp you can do that as well or the cambridge but what I also say is that it's all about the location. Just go to their website and check if they organize IELTS for people in certain countries. That is it. The next question on my list is It's very simple. I've made a complete video about this. You can check my channel or check here to click on the link. It will take you directly to that video. So it's it, first of all, start with looking at which institution you want to register with. Is it the British Council? Is it the IDP or the Cambridge Assessment um, Institution? It's up to you to discover. Now, if it's the British Council, all you have to do is to go to their site and they've got the procedure on there for you to go through. You have to create accounts, I mean, with your email address and uh, you have to make sure that you have a valid passport or ID card, okay? So the acceptable ID cards are passport and then your Ghana card, especially if you are in Ghana. But if you are in other countries, uh, for now, the ID card I can specify here is 
a passport because it's generalized okay everybody has got a passport especially if you want to travel so that's what i can say for now the registration is not difficult just know the institution you want to register it and then go for it <laughs>
your pass or fail one. Now the second thing about the test date is that you know you must choose a test date based on how long you can prepare so if you would want to prepare for one month you choose a test date as such if you want to prepare for one year you have to choose a test date that matches that so that is what i can say for now <laughs> that this is individual i can't really tell you that i use two weeks use one month use six weeks or six months to prepare it's individual the reason is that we've all got different learning capabilities my ability to capture things as fast as possible is different from somebody else so if i can use let's say two weeks to prepare for all the four aspects I don't expect you to use the same two weeks because my capability to capture things may be different from yours or my capacity to capture stars in my mind may be different from yours. Okay? It's about knowing the type of learner you are. Are you a fast learner, are you a slow learner or an intermediate learner? And you are able to choose how many days or months or weeks you have to prepare. So it's all about knowing yourself. And the next question here is that... <laughs> There are so many factors to consider. I won't say there are so many factors, but there are some factors to consider if you want to choose the paper based IELTS or the computer based IELTS. First of all, you have to look at the fact that are you an IT inclined person? Are you good at typing? Are you much more versed in using the laptop? Because if it's about the computer base, you are going to do your exams on the laptop or on the computer. You are going to type your writing test and you are going to type your answers with regards to the reading. So the question is, are you so fast that you can type your answer within a specified period? That's the question you have to I mean, ask yourself. And for me, I felt like going for the paper based test because looking at all the exams I've read, it has been much more of on the paper. So why then should I go for a computer based test or no? I mean, that's how I looked at it. And yes, one important aspect is that it may also depend on how fast you want your results. People who write the IELTS on the computer or who do the computer based IELTS receive their results five days or let's say three to five days after they've written the exams. And then those who are probably written the paper based will receive their results 13 days after. So it's about how fast you want your results. There are some people who have registered with an institution and they are expected to produce the results within a short period. Okay, so for you, it's advisable that you go for the computer basis so that on the day the results will be released on time and the next question is yeah so there are some people who might have probably registered for the exams let's say they've chosen a one month date and when the time is getting closer they realize that they are not still prepared to write these exams it's like they don't want to go in and fail so you would want to cancel the test yeah you can cancel your ielts test but there are some specifications to this or there are some kind of i mean clue to this um you should cancel it some weeks before your test date okay i'm not really too sure but you can go to the british council's website or if you have whichever institution you registered you just go to their website they've answered i mean some of these questions in their faqs so you'll be able to get an accurate answer to that the next question i've got here so the high score you need depends on the institution you're applying for if it's the nmc they've got their specific score you must get if it's to apply to the university they've got their own cutoff point i mean it depends on the institution so that's why i said i first of all get to know why you're writing the IELTS, which institution are you writing the IELTS for and you'll be able to know their cutoff point so for now what i can say about nurses and midwives is that you know to register with the EKNMC, you need an overall band score of at least seven band seven and you need at least seven in the listening test seven in the reading test and then at least seven in the speaking test and at least 6.5 in the writing if you get a score you are free to go and the next question is so the test day is the day you are going to write your exam so let's say if it's tomorrow what should you do i would say that on the test day just go there as early as possible so if your exam is let's say around eight o'clock just go there an hour before it's just to familiarize yourself with the environment, just to see how the things go and to ease that kind of tension. And uh, also make sure that, you know, you are confident with whatever you've done so far. Just tell yourself that you can do it. I mean, you might have used one month, three months or four months to prepare and it's far enough to get you on point. 
what i also say is that make sure that whatever strategy you practice with you are not going to change it you are going to use the same strategy because for all you know this strategy might have helped you to work your way out within the 60 minutes ideally don't change your strategy probably know that you can do it um, get all the required materials your pencils your erasers apparently they may give you some of these paraphernalia as the exam center but just go with yours because for all you know you might have practiced with this pencil you have used this eraser in the course of your practice and it's like you know your pencil so just go with yours and if you are given one apparently you can have a backup <laughs> Speaking test is another thing. We speak English almost every day. So what I would say is that you can practice with a friend, especially somebody you know is also working his or her way out with the IELTS. But if you've got no friend like that, you can just speak to a friend for him or her to understand you so that this person can easily assess you. And then let's say you've got no friend around or sometimes this friend that comes to help you is at work or is not always available. You can use your mirror or your phone camera. So all you have to do is just set the camera on you and then you see yourself speak into the camera. Probably make sure that you are recording whatever you are saying so that you, know that you can have a playback and look at the marking criteria, what they are expecting from you in terms of the speaking test and you'll be able to mark yourself out you can stand in front of the mirror and speak into it and with that you can back it up with let's say your voice holder or something like that and the last question is how do i draw a good steady timetable for my IELTS practice you've got four aspects to write to sit for the listening speaking writing and then the reading First of all, identify which of these aspects you have difficulty in and then input much of it on the timetable. Probably if your question has not been said on here, you can leave that in the comment section and I would quickly give an answer to that.